Why just passenger ship in the world? But we didn't call her Titanic then. I was there from the beginning. I watched the ship race play the key blocks. They sent big wooden blocks from the slipway to start with. Then the key on top of that, like a backbone. And the frames attached to that, like a skeleton. Workshops everywhere. It took weeks to find your way around. The workshops of every trade you ever heard of. Painters, seal makers, coppersmiths, boiler makers, cabinet makers. I even learned a bit about French balls and all. Harlow Bush was a fine place to work, but dangerous. Every ship crossed the lake, and there'd be lots of injuries besides. I was in the engine works for a while. Very well equipped it was. That's where we built the triple expansion engines. Two of them, each as high as a three-story house. I worked in the frame bending shop. You had heat steel beams in the furnace, then hook them on the slabs of cast iron, and hammer them curved. It was still work. You had to bend them more than you needed, because the frame straightened out a little when it cooled. The shell plates that made up the hull weighed up to four and a half tons. <laughs> they were taller than the da. The plates were overlapped on the edges. Some were raised, one after another. We called it clencher. One of the four men taught me years ago. That's how you built steel ships. I work as a heater boy. You had to heat the rivets on a wee plate. You pump the bellows till the rivet was white hot. Then you get a hold of it with your tongs and throw it up to the catcher. And he put it in the hole in the plate for the holder up. There were two of us from the other side of the plate to the holder up. We had to hammer the rivets so it filled the hole before it turned dull red. The double bottom. That's a wee space we call the tanks, made up of steel plates. The rest of the river squad all had to fit into that gap. One of the four men would check each rivet with a special hammer. If it made a ringing sound, we'd have to go back and chase it out afterward. I get scared working down in that double bottom. You only had candles for light. And the constant hammering against the shell plates. You could hear it all over Belfast. Some of those boys ended up stone deaf, so they did. We were paid 31 bob a week. The heater boy and catcher got 16 bob. But we all worked the same 54 hours. The other deck was steel too, and part of the strength of the ship. There's no straight lines on a ship. And when you look down the other deck, you can see the shear of a hull, a stop to her flexing that scene. The stern frame had to be strong enough to take the rudder and turning in heavy seas. You'd have all these timbers and guy wires to steady the frame, and men scurrying around like ants underneath. When we came to launch day, I was torn between pride and fear. The standing wings were coated in tallow, train oil and soft soap. So the ship would slide when they shifted her weight off the blocks. That was the most dangerous part. And the shipwrights were not going to weigh the last props. They were under compression, you see, and the sliding wings would be released by the hydraulic trigger. One hundred thousand people watched the launch. Some paid a ball to sit in the reserved seating. There were extra trams laid on. Then we all went off to the pub to wish her well. Doc, you were proud to be an Aylid man that day. And Titanic was the pride of Belfast.